Oh, that's looking nice now. Now you might remember this from yesterday and I, remember I told you there was a mountain that looks a lot like Kirkefell in Iceland? Well, this is it here. And as you can see, you might get a bit of sun flare coming to your direction, but it's cleared out today. It's absolutely stunning. And it's just starting to get some of those clouds round the top of it as well. We didn't think it was going to happen to be honest because it was a total blue sky day here but you could feel the wind pick up and the wind started to bring in the clouds from over to the left of me here. So there's more mountains over this side and there's just waves of cloud coming through. So what we're hoping for, this is going to be a sunset shoot tonight and as you can see there's also already some atmosphere appearing around the top of it there. So I've, I've found my composition, I've set myself up, I'm ready to capture the composition I've set up. I'm using a bit of the, there's a little sort of water tower off to the right hand side of my frame and off to the other side of my frame I've got a pine tree just to try and balance the frame out quite nicely there. When this light starts to happen and hopefully it will I'll start to talk you through more about what I'm going to do with it. So guys what I'm going to have is this pine tree off to the right hand side of my frame and then this water tower which is a lovely building actually is going to be off to the left hand side of the frame just to try and balance both sides out and I think it just adds something to the composition which I really quite like so it's something I really wanted to include. Now what we're waiting for is as you can see the sun's going to be really harsh because you're looking straight at it. Um, but we're waiting for that sun to dip down below the horizon and then hopefully, hopefully, these clouds will keep rolling in and they'll light up above the mountain itself. That's the hope anyway. So hopefully what you can see now is the sun's actually dipped down behind that ridge line and that's what we want to happen because I think what will happen is as the sun gets lower in the sky these clouds that are hanging around above it are going to get illuminated. Although we're not going to have any direct light on the foreground, which is a bit of a shame, I think that should make up for it. Well, hello, hope you're doing well. 
So we've just pulled over on our way to the next location. We've met up with Luigi. Um, we've got Matt, we've got Ed Rhodes with us. We've got Tom Peters as well. And we're heading on into the next location, which is up in the mountains. And we're gonna get to this uh, next area where we're staying for the next couple of days. And it's a lot greener than it has been in the, the other place we were staying. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting for sure. So really looking forward to seeing what we can capture with this. So the guys have just headed into the supermarket behind us here just to grab some supplies before we head up on into the mountains. So looking forward to seeing the different kind of shots we can uh, get of Grand Sasso from this other side of the mountain ranges because it's so much lusher and greener over this side. So it's going to be interesting for sure. So we've now arrived where we're going to be staying for the next couple of days. And we're going to start exploring the area soon. We're going out onto um, a mountain that overlooks Grand Sasso, as far as I understand. And it'll be really good to see, get a different perspective from this side of the mountains, because basically what we've done, we've come underneath the mountains right to the other side of where we were shooting previously. So it will be interesting to see what the differences are. First sort of um, impressions, if you like, is that it's a lot greener on this side. There's a lot more vegetation. It seems a lot warmer as well. There doesn't seem to be the amount of wind as there was on the far side of the mountains. The other side is called Little Tibet and you can kind of see why it looks a lot more sparse. There isn't as much um, greenery, trees or things like that. It's more rocky. Uh, but this side seems a lot softer if you like. So yeah, we're going to get going in shortly, about another 10 minutes we're going to set off and then we'll, uh, we'll get exploring and I'll get back to you then. I have made uh, a sandwich for you with a pecorino cheese uh, and a mortadella ham uh, and uh, the focaccia bread. Get your bloody la laughing gear around that, mate. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. I think we need, to, we need to get one thing clear. Yesterday morning, I didn't photograph with them. Why? Because Why not? we got very, very drunk the night really? before. Yeah, yeah, we just drank, <laughs> I don't know, like 75 bottles of red wine. Um, <laughs> I need to justify myself a little bit. I was excited to, to be with these guys and I just went a little bit overboard. <laughs> but we stopped drinking at 2 a.m. Oh. Ed woke me up at 5 a.m. If he had have woken me up at 10 a.m., I probably wouldn't have vomited. I was still <laughs> in the phase of... <laughs> anyway, I'm still not sure if the vomit was red wine or just pure blood. I'm not sure. <laughs> I was talking to you before about reactive photography and this is kind of what I mean about it. We're on our way to the next location and the, we noticed this little village with the mountain range behind. So just pulled the car up and stopped to grab a shot. And it's just a case, we're just waiting for the light to hit the town now and illuminate it, give it a bit of um, life to the foreground of the shot. But uh, I've taken one exposure for the mountain range behind because it's quite bright. And then we're just waiting for the light to hit that town. So hopefully you'll be able to see on the back of the camera here. So you've got the mountain range right in the middle of this V. And it comes up over the top here with the clouds over the top. It just looks awesome. So I've taken one exposure for above there. And then I'm just waiting for the light to hit the town, which is just about where my, uh, my focus marker is bang in the middle of the frame. So just waiting for the light to hit there. So a bit of waiting's paid off. Must have been here about 25 minutes now and just waiting for the light to hit the town and it, and it has. And here's that image. So we've driven to the top as far, we can, as far as we can go now and, uh, and this is what's greeted us at the top. I mean, look at this. We have nothing like this at home, but man, how beautiful is that? Absolutely just blown away by this. I mean, you literally drive to the top of the road and you've got this sort of 360 panoramic view all the way around you. You can look way out to the coast over, over one way. 
you've got the the Apennine Mountain Range, um, which is all of all of this is all of Grand Sasso. So they all have individual names, and I think um, I'll find out of, of Luigi which one this is, and I'll pop it up on the screen. But oh, just absolutely stunning. I mean, the idea is we've come here for uh, sunset. Um, we were shooting yesterday on the far side of this mountain range, looking back out this way. Um, so yeah, we've come round to this side of it today and we're gonna be shooting back towards this direction with the sunset. So hopefully we get some nice dramatic light later on. But yeah, I'm just absolutely blown away by this. It looks so beautiful. I didn't honestly expect, I guess when you go somewhere new, you don't know what to expect really. And I, I hadn't done a whole load of research on this. I was going basically off what Matt had told me about it. But just to come here and see this right in front of you. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, I must say, because you know what I'm like with heights. I don't, pff, heights and me don't, don't go together at all. But um, I just I, I can't let that get the better of me in this sort of situation, because look at that. It's not every day you get to see that. It's not every day you get to shoot it either, so I'm really looking forward to getting something spectacular, hopefully, later. Guys, now we've got the, uh, the main shot done because all the cloud has ab absolutely evaporated from where the mountain is. We got some shots earlier on which we had a really nice band of cloud right away across the middle. So now that that's done and it's all gone, we've switched around to look out where the rest of the light is and there's loads of layers and light beams coming down. There's loads of light catching the hilltops over further away from us over there. So it's a case of getting the long lens out now and just picking out these smaller details. Something I really enjoy actually, once you've got that wider shot is to just get the long lens on and start picking details out because those are the really, really unique shots. The, the ones that are gonna stand out because basically they're yours. There won't be that many shots that are, that are close up, detail shots that have been replicated before. So wow, what an evening we've had. As all those clouds disappeared there, there was so much more to shoot. It was pretty much a 360 degree view up here. And you could just stand there just picking out details all the time. But it happened so fast, it's really hard to kind of get it back to you guys. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll pop up the images that I've taken from this last 15 minutes or so where the sun was starting to go down. There was a few that I took with uh, sunbeams coming down across the mountains off in the distance and there was lots of nice layers. And then there was some more as the sun was setting behind the same mountains. And then over to the right of us, there's some more mountains in the distance and they were getting lovely, beautiful red light on the tops. So I'll pop those up now for you. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one soon. Take care, bye bye. <laughs>